Time to do the Musk and the re-emergence of Trump. So, with the first one, from Musk till dawn, I brought you up to speed. Let's get you really up to speed. So, just as a little addition, okay, to the claims that Twitter, and one of the most ridiculous headlines I've ever seen, Twitter had a resurgence in the N-word. A 500% increase in the N-word after Musk took over, right? Which... By the way, common sense will tell you what happened there. A bunch of people wanted to test whether or not they would get banned and typed it. Trolls and losers. Another bunch of people wanted to type it to show, look, look how hateful Twitter's got now that spaceman's here. This bad, the bad spaceman. And, of course, as it would obviously transpire to be, not that I ever believed a 500% number anyway, because I don't even know how you would assess that metric or have that data to begin with. Twitter actually put a statement out and addressed it and said, yeah, we were victims of a large trolling campaign campaign after Elon Musk took over. And you can see here, Twitter's head of safety and integrity, so not Elon himself. Uh, by the way, you know, there's a lot of, there's still dissent within the company as we'll get to. So, you know, if you want to call this guy a liar, have at it, but it's not, it's not Elon. The head of safety and integrity says the platform is facing a trolling campaign of racist abuse after a report found the use of the N-word jumped on the social media site less than a day after Elon's takeover. In a thread on Saturday, Twitter's Yoel Roth, by the way, people wanted him fired uh, because he was part of the old guard and he completely backed up all of the bullshit they did. But Elon said, I actually like this dude and I want to keep him around. So let's see how that goes. But uh, a lot of people are very upset about it in the circles of the people who get banned on Twitter. But Yol Roth explained that the platform's policies around hateful conduct on the platform haven't shifted at all since Musk took over on Friday, despite reports of increasing use of slurs and targeted harassment. Hateful conduct has no place here and we're taking steps to put a stop to an organized effort to make people think we have, said Twitter's head of safety and integrity. Well, Roth confirmed that in the last two days, Twitter has seen an uptick in hateful conduct from users. He attributed what's happening to a small number of accounts that have posted a ton of tweets that include slurs and other derogatory terms. Offering up an example, he wrote that more than 50,000 tweets repeatedly using a specific slur came from just 300 accounts. He did not clarify what the slur was. I'm going to guess that it begins with an N. So this is like very typical, just in broad terms of what the media likes to latch on to. Oh, look. This is how much abuse is happening. And they measure the individual like tweets or the individual posts rather than the number of accounts. For example, we saw this in the furor after England lost in the finals of the European Cup. Yes, we're talking about sports again. Why not? But everybody said that, oh, the black players got racially abused by English fans, thousands of English fans in the aftermath of that game. And it's a disgrace and shows how far we've got to go. And Southgate, who I just wish would shut the fuck up because every time he gets a microphone he says something utterly stupid like today he just said in a refereeing video guide that's been handed out to referees in the world cup in qatar he doesn't like the fact that an example of a penalty given against england is being used as an example for the refs to see because he thinks it will make the refs biased against england moron what a fucking loser anyway in the aftermath of losing to it in to italy in the european championship finals that was predicated on the fact he picked penalty takers he shouldn't have picked but we can't talk about that because england got to the final and it was nearly coming home so what did the british media go with they went with this idea that there was this whole spread english racial abuse yet when it was actually investigated by police uh, including you know authorities abroad and twitter themselves they dialed it down to like 52 accounts or something 52 twitter accounts the majority of which were from overseas in countries like eastern europe not exactly known for their tolerance so at the end of the day the media will run with this hysteria every time they get an opportunity but when you look at it when you dial down into it by almost any conceivable metric there is more and more moderation and less and less actual hateful conduct on these platforms across the board also just as a little funny bit musk's been walking around and going into all of the fucking cupboards and closets in his new toy his new office and you can see here he found uh, this uh, at the at the much thing. Stay woke. Well. Entire entire closet full of secret closet of hashtag woke t-shirts. <laughs> Here we are. So hashtag stay woke left over, and these were actually 
Um, these were manufactured by Twitter themselves as merchandise to be sold in the aftermath, I believe, of a, a police shooting, which again shows the company's strange strange priorities one of the things i've really noticed since the acquisition is the journalists are talking about how twitter is going to fail but no journalist is talking about why was tw why did twitter have eight thousand employees why was it expanded even jack dorsey by the way said he expanded the company too too much too quickly and it wasn't financially secure why are they spending money selling merchandise to protest police shoot you're a social media platform it's not that i have a problem with it i just don't understand how that's part of your business model i can't imagine these were profitable especially if you've got an entire closet with the clothes left over anyway let's talk about something elon did wrong because people think i'm an elon dick sucker and as i've said plenty of times i find the worship of elon musk to be as cringe as the fear and loathing that he supposedly inspires the bottom line is he's just a dude who owns some businesses most of them subsidized that talk a good game and don't really deliver all that much a lot of smoke and mirrors he's a salesman to me rather than a genius engineer but you know buying twitter i'll tell you the last week on twitter has been more interesting than anything that's happened on twitter since they banned trump it's actually like i'm seeing things on my timeline i wouldn't typically see there's like a you know users i've not seen for years are coming back not all of them good but you know some of them good some people that were banned improperly are now back on the platform and able to tweet again yeah, that's interesting. Anyway, the cringe is that everything Elon Musk does is going to be a good idea. And one of the things he proposed was Twitter Blue. Now, Twitter Blue had already existed. It was existed in a pre-Elon state. But it was just basically you paid a moderate subscription and bells and whistles. And Elon's been pushing this idea. If you pay $8, you're going to get all these beneficial features, one of which will be a blue check next to your name. Now, the problem with this is those blue checks were always there to verify that someone is genuine and even though i rail against the journalists the american journalists all the time i'm a journalist and i understand why the verification mark was important now twitter used to capriciously use it to punish people they took away people's verification as a as a punishment because somewhere in like 2015 suddenly a check mark meant you were important and it just doesn't it's not about that it's always been if somebody impersonates me it could have actual harmful consequences and it seems that elon just wasn't really aware of what he was doing they sort of half rolled out this thing where you get a little gray verification mark that's official but elon publicly said at the time not every entity is going to get that not everybody's going to have it uh, it's going to be something that we you know only give to like news agents Agencies, political agencies and not and, and celebrities that we deem of a certain notoriety level people like me won't have that and the problem is not that i really care about a tick next to my name but i can certainly see a world where someone impersonates me and uses it for harmful purposes there's already people doing that on youtube from crypto exchanges saying hey followers in the comments why not link here and get this free you know and obviously it's not me but they're copying me and and they doing it on verified accounts that they have purchased from other pre-verified accounts on youtube so he didn't seem to grasp why the verification was important and so he said well ah, if you click on the blue tick it'll tell you whether they were verified for being important or whether they were verified because as the meme goes this motherfucker paid for twitter and unfortunately the problem is people don't do that people aren't going to do that people the blue it, it's instilled in you the blue tick has meant it's a real source for years on the platform and elon musk just didn't foresee what was going to happen and so you can imagine some of the shit that went on i'm just going to give you a few examples these were some of the trolls and what they were able to do with just a week of uh, uh twitter blue being in existence so Somebody created a Lockheed Martin account called Lockheed Martini. Didn't put that it was a fucking parody. Said we will begin halting all weapon sales to Saudi Arabia, Israel, and the United States until further investigation into their record of human rights abuses. By the way, what a world we would live in if that actually happened. Slight problem. 
uh, as you'll see here. Unfortunately, that absolutely crippled their stock price. They wiped out billions uh, immediately because people thought the announcement was fucking true. And so, listen, do I'm not? I'm, am I shedding any tears about this? Certainly not. This is hilarious and brilliant, and I wish more of this would happen every fucking day. But the problem you've got is, if you are Elon Musk and Twitter, which is reliant on advertisers, these are not great optics, my friend, that you're allowing verified accounts to essentially come in and wipe out billions of fucking stock investment. Another classic happened uh, in regards to uh, one of the companies that manufacture insulin in, in America, and you can see here. We are excited to announce insulin is free now from Eli Lilly and company. Look at the <laughs> talk about buy the dip. That's how much fucking it wiped out from a big pharma company. And there was just other stuff. Stuff that's not as important but uh, stuff that definitely caused a hubbub let's say. Uh, remember these people are advertisers. For, there was loads of Nintendo spoofing for some reason. This was tweeted out and picked up by the game press. Nintendo tells Nintendo fans, f go fuck yourself with Mario flipping the finger. Right? This was another one that was like an issue for some reason. Uh, we all remember we were all super excited about Valve maybe announcing what Neon Prime was. Well, a fake Valve software, you can see Valve software, were excited to unveil Ricochet Neon Prime, our next competitive platform this Thursday at 10am Pacific time. Can't wait to see you on the grid. And again, like, put it this way, there was a lot more retweets and quote tweets by the end this fooled a lot of people so it was a fucking disaster this they needed a complete rethink of all of the verification mechanics and so with these great layoffs that have happened to twitter there was a bunch of people sort of having to sort of fight back and and, and suspend all these counts obviously elon musk has now said one of the biggest priorities under the new twitter blue system will be fighting impersonation that will be the key rule that's the one thing you will not be able to do free speech or otherwise and so of course you know all the usual losers that wanted to basically like oh, is he really for free speech they went and impersonated elon musk and a load of them got banned kathy griffin got banned she uh, kathy, kathy griffin got banned and uh, this is how terminally online kathy griffin is let me just show you this you'll you'll be staggered by this one. Kathy Griffin impersonated Elon Musk to get banned on Twitter, got banned on Twitter, and then came back on her dead mother's still active Twitter account. Like, this is the most terminally fucking online thing I have ever seen. This is like just beyond a fucking joke. And so she got suspended again, and that account got suspended. But now it's all been unsuspended. Big bad, evil Elon did it. But yeah, she actually logged into a dead mother's Twitter account to do that. So, anyway... Twitter will fail. That's been the big screech from the media class. It will definitely fail because, I don't know, Elon is firing the moderators or something. So they did this. They tried to do this, like, shit gotcha here. This was Rolling Stone politics saying... Uh, Elon Musk in April, for Twitter to deserve public trust, it must be politically neutral. Elon Musk on Monday, I recommend voting for a Republican Congress. And this was Rolling Stone trying to do a gotcha. As John Levine here says, Twitter should be politically neutral. Elon tweeted his views as a private citizen. Don't understand the gotcha here. By the way, was there any doubt that Elon Musk was going to vote? Uh, Republican. He's publicly said he supports DeSantis. He's publicly said he thinks right now Democrats are harming the economy. So, I mean, obviously, like, you've got two choices. He's, an, you know, he's American. So, yeah, ridiculous. But, yeah, that's uh, that's what they did. And uh, that was their attempt at a, at a gotcha. And not a very good one. Obviously, his personal opinion is not that of the platform. Ad people started demanding that advertisers pull out. And I don't know why Volkswagen has the has the audacity really to to say any of this i don't know who volkswagen think they are it's super strange this was a report on reuters where they basically said we're going to stop advertising on twitter and we strongly recommend that you do as well just weird um i i don't know why or where that came from but they were one of the first big advertisers to uh, jump ship essentially and of course understand this is all temporary and performative they want to stick it to elon so they can prove that they're the power players not elon and 
they hope as well it'll like give them some good publicity but that's all it is it's got nothing to do with any principles these are corporations they don't they don't have principles no matter what they say then the adl the anti-defamation league decided they would wade in they said that uh, you advertisers better pull out. And this is this is the part of their Stop Hate for Profit campaign, which I'll read you the thread. But let me just also tell you about the thing that goes on here. So the Democrats are hugely influential uh, towards the ADL now. Used to be the ADL, used to be a place where they would fund your lawyers if they felt your civil liberties were being infringed. They've got like very famous cases where they've represented some of the worst people in society with some of the most reprehensible views because, you know, they used to believe that the First Amendment stood for something. Now they're basically just a pack. And the grift that the ADL runs is this. The Democrats politically pressure them for anything they don't like. And basically the ADL will now say to people, we will call you bad, we will call you racist if you don't fucking do what we say. It's like a little flex for them. They're more concerned in that than actually doing what they used to do. So you can't think of the ADL in the same terms as what the ADL historically used to be. This is their stop hate for profit. Now, remember, this was on November 4th. So this is like, there hasn't even been any evidence of Twitter getting better or worse or any hate or any problems or any of that stuff. So we're joining dozens of other groups to ask advertisers to pause Twitter spending because we are profoundly concerned about anti-Semitism and hate on the platform. So before Elon has even got his feet under the table, they're telling you Twitter has become more racist, more anti-Semitic, when of course, We've been told there's been no policy changes. We haven't even had time to put our council in place yet. The past Tuesday, Twitter's new owner, Elon Musk, met with representatives from the U.S. civil society organizations, including uh, Jonathan Greenblatt of the ADL. Uh, following the meeting, Musk pledged that Twitter will continue to combat hate and harassment. Since that meeting, Musk permitted Kanye, tw uh, Kanye West to start posting again, from Ye's DeathCon 3 tweet to Kyrie Irving promoting an anti-Semitic film. We've seen celebrities' use of Twitter to disseminate anti-Semitic conspiracy theories and hate to tens of millions of followers so in other words all the advertisers have to pull out now because some dudes not elon have tweeted things that are deemed as unsavory by the way i don't know surely you go after yay with the rest of everybody else surely you go after Kyrie irving i mean those guys it's not like those guys didn't pay for the shit they said they thought you know kanye west lost billions of dollars overnight all his endorsement deals gone his adidas endorsement deal gone Kyrie irving got suspended for 10 games for refusing to clarify his link to a to a video that had holocaust denial in it so uh, you know like maybe maybe that's where you go but no of course they're not interested in that they want twitter to be the platform they control again that's what it's always about. Like Twitter was the um, it was the public square for the world, and the American DNC and all their operatives had a dis and the journalist class all had a disproportionate amount of control in that square. Of course, they don't like change. There was also just slew after slew of assumptive media pieces which were just ridiculous everybody in the media seems to think they know the inner workings of uh, twitter and why it's going to fail uh this is obviously abc.net uh, Elon Musk's Twitter takeover could lead to the social media giant's collapse as Twitter sheds more employee. Is the company really at risk of breaking up? Forbes went with it's already failing. NBC News special investigation of the meltdown at Twitter. Can Twitter survive Elon Musk? Like the idea that this guy can put rockets on fucking Mars but can't run a fucking website. Uh, why Twitter will fail shortly uh, in ZD dot net the guardian uh users urge to archive tweets amid rumors of twitter implosion and on and on and on it goes cara swisher who obviously pops up in all of these things because she's simply awful you remember her for attacking journalists over the fetterman campaign I spent the last day talking to smart folks who know Elon to try to grok why it feels capricious and what the method is to the seeming madness. Here you are for those who care, for those who don't, good for you for ignoring chaos monkeys. I don't even know what the fuck you're babbling about. Go outside would be my strong recommendation. We can see here, this was the New York Times. Elon Musk's Twitter teeters on the edge after another 1,200 leave. And remember, as we'll get to, they were leaving because they were given a choice. Do a day's fucking work 
work, <laughs> an actual day's work, or and, and be willing to work hardcore, or get the fuck out of the company because you've had it too good for too long and the company's not profitable. I'll show you a video of a Twitter employee. Uh, well, a, a get, it turns out it wasn't an employee. It was a guest that was invited to see what the Twitter setup is like. I will certainly show you that in a moment. But you also had uh, this making the outrageous claim. Elon Musk's Twitter officially has the most restrictive speech policies that Twitter has ever had in its entire history. Again, because some pe some people were making the claim that Elon, they would say Elon Musk is bad, and then when it got flagged for being spam or something like that, it would get flagged. It would say like, this is spam, this is potentially unsafe. And it turned out they were just spamming Elon Musk bad all over Twitter. Like, I, I don't know. That's always been a rule. Like, they brought in a ton of changes to stop that. Anyway, mass layoffs were happening at the company. So, obviously, uh, our good friend uh, AOC uh, wanted to come in and show. She's obviously been at war with uh, Elon in just an increasingly cringeworthy way. Uh, making all sorts of f false claims. By the way, she should be banned for impersonating a politician, but whatever. Um, so, look, if you're a Twitter or any employee subject to mass layoffs, New York has a warns law too. New York warns law requires 90 days not notice for mass layoffs from large employers. Employers who violate may be required uh, to have back pay and your wages and benefits. And so this was a lawyer, Lisa Bloom, an employment lawyer, had also said, like, listen, you're covered with the California uh, uh, law of warn and Elon Musk's violating this, so get in touch with me. But the problem was I don't think they'd actually seen the email that got sent out right and these are the two emails that got sent out and it totally complies with that law you can see this which by the way this is mental you're fired right <laughs> or you're safe those were the two emails you got depending on uh <laughs> which which one you were in you're fired hello i shared earlier today twitter is conducting a workforce reduction to help improve the health of the company these decisions are never easy and it is with regret we write to inform you that your role at twitter has been impacted uh, today is your last working day at the company however you remain employee employed by twitter and will receive compensation and employee benefits through your separation date of february 2nd 2023 and obviously that is compliant with the amount of notice that they had to have i mean i wouldn't be happy about getting that in my inbox but i don't know it's america you never had any fucking rights to begin with if you're an employee you know half of these people are on bogus fucking contracts that don't protect them and then there was the other one you're safe for now and as we'll get to no one was really safe for now all right back uh just back on that though just to show you that this cringe help help i'm being censored it goes both ways it was reported in the independent alexandria ocasio cortez uh she basically was lying and saying that um she was complaining about paying eight dollars for twitter and you can see here she accused elon musk of sabotaging her twitter account what happened was on the early days when elon took over some accounts weren't getting their notification feed through i don't know if that was sabotaged by some disgruntled employees out the out, out, going out the door i don't know if it was a temporary suspension in some areas or f for verification uh, accounts while i did it but it happened to me as well and i'm pretty sure elon isn't sabotaging my account but i had the exact same thing she was complaining about and this is the grift she complained about it and then pretended that elon was like s saying it yo elon while i have your attention you should pay you should why should people pay eight dollars just for their app to get bricked when they say something you don't like and of course nothing like that happened nothing of the sort but this is what they do on both sides like you go uh, the right wing they're censoring me they're censoring me they're not they're not you're just lying because you want engagement he's censoring me he's censoring me, not even in the building hasn't pressed a single button so uh pretty fucking embarrassing all round now let's get to the mega email that got sent out which is the cause of the consternation after elon musk's ultimatum twitter employees start exiting what was the ultimatum he said don't worry about the mass layoffs because the best people are staying. And this was like, Twitter had 3,000 or so employees left. I think he cut it down from something like 8,000. And then he said, all the people who stay, you've got to be willing to go hardcore. Uh, and he said here, right? He sent out a poll to the rest of the 3,000 employees. And it, the poll basically said, like, what level of work are you willing to do? And uh, <laughs> it said here, 42% of 180 respondents said i'm gonna take an exit option i'm out i'm free a quarter said they were gonna stay reluctantly seven percent said yes we're gonna stay i'm hardcore and i'm dedicated to you lord elon and 
that's what happened he thinned the number out by the way performance on the website has not changed since he reduced it from 8,000 to whatever we're at now i have noticed no issues whatsoever so i'm just gonna say maybe some of these motherfuckers were doing uh superfluous jobs i've got a video actually let me see if i can just drag and drop this for you welcome to a day in my life as a twitter employee so this past week went to sf for the first time at a twitter office badged in honestly took a moment to just soak everything in what a blessing also started my morning off with an iced matcha from the perch then i had a meeting so quickly scheduled one of these little pod rooms which were so cool they're literally noise canceling took my meeting got ready for lunch look how delicious this food looks oh my goodness i was so overwhelmed then made my way down to this log cabin area i don't know what this is but it was really cool played some foosball with my friends to kind of unwind a bit um also found this really cool meditation room that i thought was super neat um i didn't do any yoga but they have this yoga room if you were a yogi so also thought that was really cool um had a couple more meetings in the afternoon had a ton of projects that we needed to knock out say hey to my teammates um <laughs> went to the went to the library to kind of get some more work done obviously had to have our afternoon coffee so made some espresso and then before leaving for the day had some red wine um that's on tap went up to the rooftop and just honestly enjoyed the beautiful weather so awesome trip so what i've been told about that video subsequently since i pulled it down was that actually it is a video that has been redubbed by someone else it was a video of somebody visiting the twitter offices like for the first time and that person that's doing the voiceover is not a twitter employee but that you can see what the twitter officers look like and certainly in my experience as somebody that's been out there in the big fucking wide world and worked at some companies i, I had a job at a let's say a telephony company a communications company and this was back in the start where it was like you know yeah we had a meditation room we had a fucking we had we had a foosball table we had bean bags you know like around the office it was fucking trash like you know and, and by the way good if you use any of those things uh they pull you up for not working so that, that was how it was it was it was there to show hey this is a super cool company to work for and you go oh my god i can play foosball at work this is the best and then of course if you don't hit your kpi you get shit canned and you have no <laughs> compensation anyway um so yeah it was, it's, it's all it's all bullshit and all of these big tech companies that do this they value themselves we want to be number one for where the employees want to come we want you to coming to work we want you to feel okay to win over time we look we got red wine on tap the bottom line is they still fucking own you you still got no fucking rights if you do anything they don't like you're still shit canned with no recourse you know don't let the trappings of them giving a shit fool you but the bottom line is as well think about how much that costs to fucking maintain it's like what are you you're a social media platform <laughs> like you just need some servers in a cupboard and a couple of people to come out from time to time and fucking delete shit that's it really you don't need red wine on tap you don't need a foosball table you don't need a yoga room what the fuck are you doing and this is in california for fuck's sake this isn't cheap to have all that office space anyway so Elon has been um, getting rid of all of these people and uh, doing these layoffs. And you can understand why. The company was hemorrhaging cash. It's had to take money from bad actors to stay afloat. We're talking Saudi investment. God knows what the fuck else. I'm sure Elon will still take that bad money, by the way. I'm not saying that's going to change. But the bottom line is, like, it was doing that and still losing money. Elon said pretty much early on, he said, if we keep the number of employees we have and the way we're spending, compared to the advertising revenue, we'll be bust in two years is there's no like it's it, it will be over so he's made the necessary cuts some of the cuts the press didn't like this is uh gizmodo elon is firing twitter employees who shit po shit post about them in slack and you can see here there's some of these people um examples of them going on twitter and we'll talk about this god awful salute emoji trend in a moment but yeah people were sat on the company slack saying elon's a cunt and then they got fired and then they cried about it on social media you can see this one here like i just got fired for shit posting i said it before and i'll say it again kiss my ass elon well you know enjoy enjoy your fucking enjoy your lack of health care benefits <laughs> enjoy your lack of pay en enjoy maybe never getting a job in big tech ever again because they all talk to each other although actually telling elon uh, to kiss your ass will probably get you a job somewhere but you can see same best way to go out and 
the the press were reporting this as if this is weird. Have you ever had a job where you can call your boss a cunt? I'm like trying to think. I'm trying to think at what level of any company I've ever worked at, from the bottom to the top, where I could call my bosses a cunt and and keep my job. Like, I, I don't think there's such a job in existence, big tech or otherwise. You know, I suppose, yeah, if, if I was self-employed, I could. And I'd be right. But, yeah, uh, mental. Yeah, I did call Big Bang Theory shit while I was at Turner. And that, that was what they call fucking thin ice. New York Times obviously wanted to do this as well. This is a great one. You'll, you'll enjoy this. I see lots of people have been typing the word based in the chat. You can see here, uh, Elon Musk continued cutting to his workforce in his third week of owning the social media company, firing employees who had criticized him and eliminating contractors. Oh no. Mr. Musk's firing followed a tweet posted on Sunday in which he wrote, Twitter was super slow in many countries because of the way it handled data and he said by the way i'd like to apologize for twitter being super slow in many countries uh app is doing uh over a thousand uh poorly batched rpcs just to render a home timeline now one of the things elon has focused on i imagine because it's an area where he does have some expertise is the coding and talking about the coding of twitter this is completely consistent with all of his messages that actually twitter needs some coding improvements and i've heard people say to me um from obviously as a streamer you know and whatever the fuck it is i am people talk to me from all over the world and i've had people say that actually yeah twitter is ass in their countries and like they prefer not to use it though you know it's not that good uh but anyway a guy here eric fronhofer came out and said i spent six years working on twitter for android and can say this is wrong so he might be right eric might be right but i'll also give you a little one of fucking life's lesson right like life's lessons if your boss says something is wrong and you want to disagree there's a channel to have this conversation and it's certainly not undermining him in public at a time when advertisers are pulling out and he's getting his fucking ass kicked how on earth could you expect to keep your job after this right or wrong you know, you, you've you got a back channel like every... Again, I, I feel this is just common sense, but whatever. So that that was a story worthy of being in the fucking uh, New York Times. And then also, because again, you'll appreciate this, guys. This was super funny. This was also in the New York Times report. Corporate credit cards for Twitter employees have also been shut off, three people said. One worker said she tried to buy a farewell drink, farewell drinks for colleagues after the mass layoffs, only to have a corporate credit card declined at the bar. Ooh, won't we think of the Twitter employees? Like, get Get fucked. Of course your corporate credit card's been fucking cancelled also, just as well. That would be misuse of company funds. He's done you a favour, you fucking melt. But this was literally being championed by the journalistic class. Like, oh, look how he's tweeting. In, the, look how he's treating the employees. It's so bad. Then there was this scoop came out, right? A big bit of the big ooh, scoop here from Zoe Schiffer. Twitter just alerted employees. It was on the 17th of November that effective immediately all office buildings are temporarily closed and badge access is suspended. No details given as to why. And the reason why, and it, the reason why this whole thing has been a bit of a shit show is there are so many people who have like pals with journalists and DNC shills and people who believe that spaceman bad and desperate to stop the re-emergence of the orange man and uh, anything else republican that they couldn't be sure who would sabotage the company and trust me Anyone who's worked at a tech company will tell you there's all sorts of little quick fixes and temporary things that never get revisited. Like there was a story emerged in the news that apparently um, there was early in Twitter's development. There was one MacBook in a cupboard with cables going into it and they couldn't tell what it was. And so they pulled the cables out and everything went down. And there had been some like it was just some mad makeshift fix that had been in a cupboard for like two years. So obviously yeah, the load-bearing Mac Mini, exactly. So obviously, you're going to be like, fuck, we've got to be super careful about who we have. And this is true of any company. You will notice increasingly corporate fit is more important than comp competence. That's been a big shift in American corporate culture. Your competence matters less. Are you willing to enter into the cult? If you are, you have a job. So naturally he has to do that. And by the way, standing up, standard operating procedure at any company where mass layoffs are occurring. I've been at companies when we've laid off lots of staff or downsized or departments have been closed. Yeah, everyone's shit gets turned off. You can't just wander into the fucking office and start like helping 
and you say, right, well, I'm getting fired. I'll just pill for a few fucking computers on the way out. In fact, I can tell you a story. Bit of fun for you here. When I was working at the Welsh Electric Board, somebody on my team uh, got fired. And this team, it was preoccupied with debt recovery. And what I did, I ran this team, and we decided which debts, to, which outstanding debts to pursue, when to install token meters if people couldn't pay back their debt. A token meter is where you prepay for your gas in your house, you put the token in, and we take an amount off that to pay off an amount of debt. And so, you know, we would get letters in, and it'd be like little old ladies who couldn't pay their bill. And I used to write off loads of debt. I was easily the guy that wrote off loads of it. And the bailiffs used to say, well, we, we're not going out on as many jobs. Why is that? And I'm like, oh, you know, we just haven't had the right ones on my team. Everyone else, of course, is getting fucking wrecked. I just like, listen, if you, if you give me a half-decent sob story, you can have fucking your debt writ off. Anyway, one of the guys on my team uh was very similarly minded to me and got fired and got fired because one of the kpis in a debt recovery unit was like going out and recovering debt right which is like <laughs> just bizarre and i was like it's not my decision mate it's above me sorry bud and there was some other he'd had conduct issues before he'd already been moved from one team into my team and then he was on another team and it was all he, he was a guy who didn't give a fuck he was one of those guys who was just working the system he knew he could work there for a few years before it got found out he didn't give a fuck and then he was gonna get fired and go somewhere else and not give a fuck there they, for me the ideal employee what everyone should aspire to be but anyway on his way out right he sent letters to loads of companies in wales our business accounts telling them ways they could save money on their energy bills and the letters were fake it was like something out of fight club he like literally sent letters to big corporate accounts saying if you want to conserve some energy this year uh drinking urine will give you a nice warm rosy glow or um you know why not let a child or two like freeze to death in the winter and and you know you'll save money that way and reduce your carbon footprint sent out all these letters on welsh electric board fucking headed paper and i knew it was immediately the, the dates all lined up it was like this motherfucker did this like for real it was like that style of humor and everything else and so we had this big investigation like about like what had happened because there were people fucking pissed off this was during the dreg as well it weren't like we had a right to these people's business didn't matter where you were geographically you could go with other companies so it was a clusterfuck and the bottom line is that guy still had access to the fucking building after he knew he was gonna go he was like yep there's your notice period you got to till the end of the week motherfucker just spent his time sabotaging corporate accounts fuck knows what else he did so listen if something like that can fucking happen at a tiny little department in a fucking you know welsh electric board c company um then yeah you know it it can happen anywhere obviously and far worse so yeah there you go a little a little bit of light relief back back to the musk they tried to make it out that this was a big deal. You see, CNN were all over this, and this is the Yahoo Finance report. They open it to ridicule him. Here's Elon Musk dancing, completely unrelated to the story. Elon Musk fired Twitter's head of sales after she refused to sack more employees. He had previously begged her not to resign, which, by the way, this just makes her look bad, but okay, let's let's get into it. Elon Musk sat Twitter exec Robin Wheeler after she refused to fire more staff. Wheeler was sat despite Musk persuading her to stay after she tried to resign, per Bloomberg. Some Twitter sales staff found out over the weekend and on Monday they were fired per platformer. This is like insane. Like she wanted out. She doesn't like Elon. Elon talks to her, convinces her to stay. Then he says, look, we got all these people in the sales department not doing anything and not generating any revenue or value. And I don't think we need them here. So please, will you lay them off? She says no. And she goes out. And they were like, oh, look, look, without Robin Wheeler, the company's going to collapse now. Nobody knows who she is. Nobody's ever talked about her before. Nobody's talked about it as if she's you know important and they're all doing this cringe worthy thing as they go out the door the salute emoji saluting in solidarity as employees in tech face layoffs an emoji meets its moment this is the new york times this used to be the paper of record by the way this is literally an article saying that the salute emoji here it is uh right is the emoji of the year just shocking ah uh, just grow like just cringe horrible nonsense the salute emoji is a great first attempt at building solidarity in tech everyone watching is saying that this is insane and horrifying and can happen at any company regardless of your free lunch it's like guys 
This was a bloated tech company hemorrhaging money. People are going to get laid off. It should happen to all of them. I, I like. It's not like I want people on the streets. It's not that I want people to be poor. It's that these tech companies have just been taking investment money and investment money and pissing it up against the wall so they can have a video come out of someone playing foosball while they're on the clock. It's a joke. Reddit is the same. Facebook is the same. All these companies lose money. They don't make any money. They don't, and they don't even really offer as like value. They just employ little activist dickheads straight out of Berkeley who repeat all of the political talking points so they can have a little fucking echo chamber. It's pathetic. Like, yeah, it can happen to your company if your company is dog shit and not operating in a profit-focused way. Anyway, that was cringe. There was another funny layoff. Right, this is a genuine tweet. Uh, people have said this is wildly inappropriate. I don't know, you tell me. Uh, Alex Cohen here. I was laid off from Twitter this afternoon. I was in charge of managing badge ac access to the Twitter officers. Elon just called me and asked if I could come back to help them regain access to HQ as they shut off all badges and accidentally locked themselves out. And Elon said, thanks for helping out. You're a lifesaver. <laughs> And it's like, everyone was going, oh my god, it's just like evil. It's like, I don't know, I think it's pretty fucking funny myself, or whatever. No one's got a sense of humor anymore. Like, Let's see what CNN Business, I believe it was, had, had to say about Elon Musk. They brought on this guy. Like, compare what comes out of his mouth to this description by Jason Kind. Be before our eyes, you think and you feel that there's a cult growing around the personality of Elon Musk. Um, you kind of made some parallels mm -hmm. with Donald Trump. But... What a so, surprise. Ex you know, develop that. How, how is he unraveling and what does that mean for for the bigger picture? Yeah, I don't think I think we're seeing the un the unwinding not of a company, but the unwinding of a person. And I believe it's a larger trend as societies become wealthier, more educated. The reliance on a super being in church attendance goes down, but they still look for idols mm -hmm. into that void to step technology leaders because technology is the closest thing we have to magic. And, G, you know, our new Jesus Christ was Steve Jobs, and now Elon Musk has taken on that mantle. And every ridiculously mean, nonsensical, irrational move he makes is somehow seen as chestnut checkers. We're just not privy to his genius yet. Uh, I think this is an individual who has demonstrated a total lack of grace, has no guardrails around him, and is going to see his wealth probably cut in half. This is already the second worst acquisition in history just a week or two weeks after the close. Is that because he's bitten off more than he can chew? Because most people believe his other enterprises are hugely successful. His competition 100%. with NASA, his Tesla cars, you know, Starlink, which is right now paying off in the battlefield in Ukraine so importantly. Well, the, the warriors that returned in, in Rome after a huge victory, and they would have a ticker tape parade for them, and they would hire a slave to follow and shadow the person and whisper in the conqueror's ear, you are only a man. I have never met a man or a woman that is infallible, Christiana. They, they all eventually screw up. A universal pillar of truth is that the universe doesn't want a consolidation of power among any country, any society, or any individual. This is someone who, in my opinion, shows a bit of a God complex, vastly overpaid in a fit of mania or seeing something we don't see. This is a company probably worth $10 billion that he paid $45 billion and thinks he can lay off half the staff and treat them poorly and disparage them and not have any ramifications. I think, quite frankly, I think he's a terrible role model for young business people. You can't deny his incredible accomplishments, but now he's running three different companies. So this notion that there is a super being, I have found that that notion never proves out. Yeah, well, you know, listen, we've all done acid, so... <laughs> You know, yeah, Steve Jobs and Jesus and Magic and Musk and Roman Conquerors. Yeah, perfect, mate. Absolutely nailed it. By the way, uh, you can see here the Jason Kint summary. Straightforward, fearless candor, splashed with industry tech and life wisdom. Fuck all wisdom in that. The assumption is that he has to fail at running Twitter because he's mortal which no one denies i mean listen i would argue that tesla has already proven that there's been a number of failings from that company starlink too um not to mention you know probably spacex if i was to know more about that i don't really care about space exploration if i'm being real with you it, it was just gibberish nonsense this is meant to be like the lucid uh you know like informative aspect of the news like tell me about twitter you compare elon musk to trump and then go off on some insane ramble about how like 
You know, he, he's just a man with a God complex. Not the most ridiculous thing I saw in terms of uh, discussion around the takeover. Again, usually don't dunk on the normies, but just wanted to, to show you this. Uh, Elon Musk, and we just hit another all-time high in Twitter usage. Remember, this is coming out amid the media going, yes, 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 stop him and getting advertising revenue. Yes, it's going to fail. It will fail. It's going to fail. And then, obviously, this guy, Nude Gingrich, uh, which is a great name, said, staring directly into a large explosion in Hiroshima, from 1945 this is the brightest day i've ever seen good omen but of course twitter still s shows no sign of breaking let's get into what, how the journalist class have been reacting to this elon musk news and you can see here this was what i told you about from the christopher rufo elon musk can send rockets out space but these journalists don't think he can keep a website running they're acting like they're all being sent to the beaches of normandy i actually went to this space this space uh which unfortunately you can't listen back to they they didn't store it was all the journalist knobs that are regularly on enemy of the people in one fucking space all to t giving anecdotes about how twitter's an amazing community and it's so sad it's dying remember same day immunity for the murder of khashoggi was announced by the u.s government uh, and predicated on a lie saying they had to do it that there was that their, their hands were tied diplomatically and it had just some of the greats uh like i said i went to this i was listening to this while i was lying in bed and i recorded like the last few minutes but there's just nothing good there unfortunately i was too late but this is the one this is like a buzzfeed writer and all this brian stelter was there taylor lorenz was in there that's the account i told you about masturbator log masturbator log tumblr was in there the masturbator log so the masturbator log is literally a guy who tweets every time he cranks it and says why he cranked it and this person was with an egg account was allowed to get up and speak to all the journalists <laughs> oh, your account is so incredibly witty of course obviously you know could you imagine like uh, uh, like objectifying fucking women like that but anyway they they, they all agreed that uh, we must find another place Twitter is dead. It's definitely dead. Or if it's not dead, it's going to die. M Spaceman, bad. Uh, and we must find another place. So they first settled on Mastodon, right? Which has been around forever, you know? It's not new. Chaos on Twitter leads a group of journalists to start an alternative. Now, I've, I remember when Mastodon first came out. I was like, this is shit. Not a fan. Basically, how it works is you create a server that moderators run that you so the people who create the server and people giving mod privileges so think of it like similar to a discord and then you all can interact with each other in a shared space tweeting from everyone else's servers but servers can completely block other servers in their entirety so if you're on that one server and not elsewhere you that's that so that's basically a summary of it i probably fucked it up i don't care it's never going to be culturally relevant it is a place for losers it is a place for sad pathetic losers that can't handle social media if you thought twitter was an echo chamber because you got a few people blocked or subreddits were bad go look at the average mastodon feed it is outrageous and also remember those mods by the way on mastodon they can read your dms just letting you know so yeah not not a not a fan of mastodon in any any way shape or form but anyway the journals wanted to stick it to elon and they wanted to go out yeah by the way yeah journalists who were saying they've got security concerns about twitter going to mastodon to create their own server where their dms wouldn't be private for certain people ridiculous but anyway um you can see here this was it they all started tweeting about mastodon some people couldn't even figure out how to use it and see here they created journat.host a part of the mastodon a vast network of thousands of servers that look and function much like twitter over the past three weeks hundreds of thousands of people seeking an alternative to twitter as elon must took over have signed up for mastodon so remember they are saying hundreds of thousands of people signed up for mastodon uh, nonsense there's no way i don't believe it for a fucking second <laughs> i'm sorry i don't i don't do you know the the source of that claim the people who own the tech for mastodon 
Nope. But because so much news happens on Twitter, and because Twitter itself is a new, such a, such a new story, the social network symbolized by a tiny bird casts a very large shadow over the social network, named after a giant prehistoric beast. Shortly after Mis Mr. Musk bought Twitter, he offered up the blue checkmark verification to anyone willing to pay $8 a month, uh, the rollout which has since been put on pause, uh, to Mr. Davis Davidson. This was a crisis for journalists. If anyone could pass them off as, say, Adam Davidson, who could trust that Adam Davidson was Adam Davidson? It felt scary to imagine a world where false verification would reign. By the way, remember, Elon had already said that credible news organizations and credible journalists and people deemed of prominence and importance will all have an, a, a separate official verification. So they all went to Mastodon. You can see here, loads of people went there saying it was going to be good. Blah, blah, blah. And of course, it's not good. It's Mastodon. It's inferior tech. Uh, everybody knew that it was. It's been around for ages and it never had a strong uptake anyway. Funnily enough, watching the tech journalists fumble and bumble their way to try and go to Mastodon. Ben Collins, who, by the way, is the journalist uh, at the heart of of these fallacious inflammatory claims about the shooting at a gay nightclub in Colorado. He's patient zero for that and absolutely should be fucking fired. It's a disgrace the way he's operated. He couldn't even figure out how to use a fucking URL correctly. This is Ben Collins tweeting out, Twitter is blocking links out to Mastodon's homepage th this morning. Just testing joinmastodon.com. Slight problem of course the problem being it is mastodon.org mastodon.org this is a serious american journalist allegedly who works at one of the biggest news networks who cannot even check a fucking url before he makes a public fallacious claim i'd fire him for that <laughs> like let alone the shitty pull today he is a consistent joke one of the worst exemplars of how far american journalism has fallen but here's what's funny about it what people didn't realize these journalists when they went to mastodon was that there are mods there. It's not like Twitter. You don't have a company with like a board of all your friends and colleagues and they all get round smoking a pipe and go, mm, we shouldn't ban this account actually. Yes, be we should ban that one. Yes, the Hunter Biden laptop is clearly rushing disinformation. There's none of that. Mods just ban you. It's like any other website. It's like a subreddit. So you can see here what people didn't realize they were going to have to acquiesce to. This is Mike Pesca, a journalist. Um, you can see here he went out there. And he shared some reporting from the uh, New York Times that I, I believe it was, or it might have been The Times, uh, that basically was talking about long-term harm of puberty blockers, I think it was. And Parker Malloy banned him and said he was an anti-trans ghoul and gone. So he can't use he can't use the journalist Mastodon server anymore because Parker Malloy is your overlord there. So again, tell me, journalists, how it's better. She can read all your DMs. She can ban you. She can do what the fuck she wants. How How is that a good thing? How is that an improvement uh, on what twitter offered it simply isn't and you get less reach less engagement access to less news uh there was something like 45 servers banned the journalist server out of the 8,000 on mastodon you can see here as well this was glenn greenwald pointing out some of the other nonsense that was going on more journalists being banned from the journalist server so uh then she got banned by a, by another mod she had her uh, privileges being revoked so you can see here all the hall monitors left twitter to go and be hall monitors on mastodon and then turned on each other and started cancelling each other it was absolutely ridiculous and it just shows that like if you put the journalists in charge of anything you will end up with this bullshit but, of course, that didn't stop the need for Mastodon to be seen as more successful than it actually is. The Guardian chimed in and said, Joining the herd, what's it like moving from Twitter to Mastodon? Users fleeing Elon Musk's takeover will find themselves in a different world, communal and defiantly democratic. <laughs> Which means any old asshole gets to just ban your account, it seems. Absolutely perfect. In fact, like some of the embarrassing fucking bans that were coming through and being reported by journalists. I don't know. How fucking democratic is this? Uh, this is uh, somebody, uh, another journalist, saying they were banned from the server 
for being a capitalist. That was their great sin. And while we were at it, some of the tone policing that was going on on Mastodon was just staggeringly embarrassing. And you can't believe these people are adults. For example, a lot of people were saying, hey everyone, welcome to Mastodon. We're journalists fleeing the evil Elon Trump regime. We're refugees. And so you can imagine that some people didn't like that. Can we please try not to use the term refugee or Twitter refugee to describe fleeing the birdcage? It's quite disrespectful to actual refugees fleeing persecution and conflict in real life. Gets worse. Uh, because on Mastodon, you know how you might have heard about black Twitter, which I've, I've never liked it as a, as a term. Like black Twitter implies that like black people all tweet the same and have the same sense of humor and everything and they do it in a way like clandestine it's a stupid term it was a stupid term when it was popularized during vine it was a stupid term after it well it's codified on mastodon they have a server for it right and you can see here uh and it's, and it's called black twitter uh, Possibly unpopular opinion here, but all these complaints about how the influx of new users is impacting Mastodon culture, it just dawned on me that it's akin to how people speak about immigrants. They came here. They should assimilate to our way of doing things and adapt our culture. As an immigrant myself, in real life, I know firsthand of the impacts of this inflexible way of thinking. It's a nuanced topic, but just something for the OG Mastodon inhabitants to consider. Food for thought. Who wouldn't want to be on Mastodon? If you use the term, oh, I'm a Twitter refugee, we have to enter into some sort of like mad rap table debate about the appropriateness of having to assimilate to mastodon culture or not whatever the fuck that may mean meanwhile people while the journalists and everyone else thought they were winning elon musk absolutely publicly said please fuck off stay on mastodon <laughs> just go like it's fine we will be okay uh, without you uh this is a report obviously on fox who've been you know enjoying this uh, uh <laughs> from start to finish uh, mastodon a social media alternative to twitter has reportedly become the source of woke infighting and journalistic gatekeeping much to the amusement of media critics and twitter ceo elon musk himself uh you can see here this is some more examples of uh, mike pesca being harassed by parker malloy you had this as well. This is from Nate Silver, the lord of the polling data. Mastodon seems like a honey trap for hall monitor personality types. Honestly, if Elon gets all the hall monitors to migrate to Mastodon, that might be his greatest contribution towards the betterment of humanity. Who would have thought Nate Silver would be based? And by the way, uh, if you thought that that doesn't make Nate Silver based, I do just want to point out, that uh, Ben Collins had a tantrum about that tweet. Don't you have some elections to be wrong about? Overlooking the fact that, of course, Ben Collins was absolutely wrong about the 2016 election too, like all of the media class were. Bizarrely, the Columbia uh, Journalism Review, uh, usually, again, cons considered to be a, uh, a, you know, eminent and distinct publication. They wrote a whole guide on what to do so you can get to you know mastodon and start an account over there as if journalists would be better off anyway this was the next part of it it's not just the journalists are leaving oh god what are we gonna do the journalists what will we do without the journalists spoiler they've all come back uh, what are we gonna do without the journalists on twitter what will we do loads of celebrities have left as well and this is weird because uh this list of celebrities it was just mass reported everywhere so i'm just going to read you some of the greats that have left twitter in the uh in the aftermath of elon's acquisition some of these are greatly disappointing to me well two of these specifically are greatly disappointing me but let's just uh <laughs> Let, let's just go on shonda rhymes shonda rhymes from gray's anatomy anyone <laughs> we uh we're all gonna miss shonda rhymes you can see here not hanging around for whatever elon has planned he's gonna streamline the company and twitter will work the the same uh sar sar i'm gonna butcher some of these names i apologize sarah Bereas Bereas. she's a grammy award-winning singer songwriter and she quit the platform never never heard of her i'm a, I'm a boomer so that might not my, my, Maybe you wouldn't know her, who she is. Um, well, it's been fun, Twitter. I'm out. See you on the other platforms, peeps. Sorry, this one's just not for me. Uh, Ken Olin, who is the producer of the Emmy award-winning show This Is Us, which I believe was some woke, silly show. I, I vaguely remember that. Uh, anyway, hey all, I'm out of here. No judgment. Let's keep the faith. 
let's protect our democracy let's try to be kinder let's try to save the planet let's try to be more generous let's look to find peace in the world now tony braxton i do know fantastic voice rhythm and blue star tony braxton said she was shocked and appalled at some of the content she had seen since musk's uh, takeover i'm shocked and appalled at some of the free speech you've seen on the platform since its acquisition remember a total of 300 accounts trolling people that have all subsequently been banned hate speech under the veil of free speech is unacceptable uh i mean let's just not get into the fact that unfortunately <laughs> hate speech is a, a, a relatively new term that's been created and the first amendment always championed it historically uh it's a boring debate i'm sure we've all had a million times therefore i'm choosing to stay off twitter as it is no longer a safe space for myself my sons and other people of color uh taya leone you know taya leone known for a role in madam secretary she said love kindness and possibilities for all of you and then deleted her twitter account brian koppelman the guy who runs the show billions which season one was good wasn't it he closed his account and told his twitter followers to follow him on instagram and tiktok instead y'alls I love it when they start with y'all. That, that's how you talk to the people. Y'all. Uh, Y'all's for real. Come find me over on Instagram and the talk. Gonna really try to take a breather from here for a minute or a month. Come deal. Close time. The talk. Alex Winter, of course, uh, from Bill and Ted, simply said, not here, Instagram. There you go. Captain Chelsea Sully Sullenberger, who is a hero pilot turned author. He said... Uh, to my friends on Twitter, I will be taking a step back from the platform for now. Connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Stay informed and hear my latest personal and professional updates. Whoopi Goldberg. We've, oh, we've lost Whoopi. It's so messy, the actor said on Twitter on the November 7th episode of The View. Goldberg announced uh, she was leaving Twitter uh, for the time being on the, uh, on the talk show with her other co-hosts. Gigi Hadid a fashion model uh not big in the world of fashion you see i just wear dirty rock t-shirts and uh don't even fucking fix up my hairline before i come on stream i've given up so fashion means nothing to me so she might be famous i don't know i deactivated my twitter account today for a long time but especially with its new leadership it's becoming more and more of a cesspool of hate and bigotry and it's not a place i want to be a part of she said then amber heard pour one out rip to a real one rip to a real one i mean the idea that amber heard who certainly received absolutely no <laughs> warranted criticism on twitter at all i mean you know seriously she, she was done so wrong by the system that's what journalists believe amber heard decided she would be closing down on twitter something she should have done probably before the fucking trial started i don't know how you think it was gonna go my dog stepped on a bee i don't know how you thought that was gonna fucking play out in the world of twitter but anyway amber heard gonna miss you she's deleted her twitter sad uh eric larson according to nbc news the comic book creator best known for the amazing spider-man tweeted in april he didn't plan to stick around and now he deactivated it in october laura benanti the tony award-winning actor said fuck you forever to elon musk and then deleted her uh, twitter account this was a sad one sad one for me mick foley very sad like i say i'm not gonna condemn mick foley like the rest of the celebrities he's always been a real one and i think as mick's got all day he's always been a big cuddly lovable guy i think he just wants to do the right thing it's like basically whenever i see virtue signaling there's people i'll give a pass to like mark hamill because i know they're genuinely good people and it's not their fault they don't know how to negotiate the media fucking landscape and they're being told to say things that they don't even critically think about because they're just being told like look this is the good thing and you're a good guy and good guys want to do good things and Mick Foley, Mark Hamill, people like this, they're on my list of guys. You get a pass. Like, you, 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 it's performative bullshit for anybody else, but I genuinely believe your intentions are good. But Foley's gone. Met, met Mick Foley when he performed in Birmingham one time. Just briefly, just for a little handshake and a sign. Nice dude. Uh, lo love his content, love his work. Uh, so anyway, but in a post announcing his on his official Facebook account, the former pro wrestler announced the break from Twitter. Since the new ownership and the misinformation and hate it seems to be encouraging, has my stomach in a knot. Jenny Slate, the actress and comic known for voicing Marcel the Shell with shoes on, and for films like Obvious Child, 
Does anyone catch that? Uh, either of them? Does anyone anyone on that one? No? Okay. Said bye. <laughs> For your information, if someone says they are me, they are not. I mean, <laughs> I can repeat this joke multiple times with these people. Like, no one even knows who you are. Why would, why would anyone want to impersonate you? Like, I don't know. But anyway, unless it's me, I'm not there anymore. So it's not me, just to be really clear. Uh, Playbill, I don't know if you saw this, Playbill was one of the first, actually, I saw this. They're a theatre community news outlet. So if you want to get news about theatre, you follow the Playbill um, Twitter account. And so if you're one of those types of people who tread the boards, uh, then yes, you wouldn't know who Playbill are. So that's fine. You know. But anyway, we feel we can no longer continue to utilize a platform where the line between news and insidious rhetoric has become blurred beyond recognition. But enough about MSNBC. According to CNN, the following Playbill affiliate Twitter accounts are now inactive. Uh, Jack White... Uh, obviously, we all know Jack White. Uh, he says, so you gave Trump his Twitter platform back. That's a bit of a spoiler. They added these in the subsequent days. Uh, absolutely disgusting, Elon. That is officially an asshole move. You intend to give platforms to known liars and wash your hands like Pontius Pilate. Biblical. And claim no responsibility, White wrote in the post. Trent Reznor. Ah, oh, Trent. Do you remember when you used to be fucking whacked out on heroin and fucking miserable and you used to make really great music and recorded the downward spiral and you recorded it in the fucking house where the Sharon Tate murder happened and and you did all these other fucked up things uh, and you made incredible music and you would never have engaged with the system. Do you remember? You're one of my favourite musicians and Trent's just sad now. Sad too woke but whatever it's fine trent gets a pass i'm giving him a pass i don't give rage against the machine man a pass trent will always get a pass he'll always be deep deep love in my heart for him he enhanced my life uh, in an interview Reznor told the hollywood reporter i'm about to depart we don't need the arrogance of the billionaire class to feel like they can just come in and solve everything even without him involved i just find that it's become such a toxic environment for my mental health i need to tune out i don't feel good being there anymore and that's fine like at least he's not saying it, it, it's elon elon bad my trump bad he's saying it's for him i'm all right I'll, 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 you know come on he can do it right who else have we got david simon i mean Again, like I say, his descent into Trump derangement syndrome. A guy who, by the way, used to be so sober and lucid in his assessments. This was a guy who, you know, talked about, like, I mean, you know, talked about the failings of Baltimore. I mean, not just in The Wire, in loads of his fucking uh, work. And, uh, you know, rightly used to lay the blame on Democrat politicians as well that have let down the major cities in America. Used to be a guy that would just cut through the bullshit. This is what's happening. This is what it's like. Used to write so brilliantly, so eloquently. But ever since Trump, brain just fucking broke. And this is what you get now. And David Simon was a journalistic hero of mine. He literally, as I've said before, he blocked me on Twitter. That's the only Twitter block. I've been blocked by all the greats. I've been blocked by William Shatner. I've been blocked by David Baddiel. I've been blocked by loads of people I admire for various reasons. And I just never complain about it because it's their right to do it. And you're mentally ill if you complain about a Twitter block. I can still read their tweets if I want to. But anyway, David Simon's really hurt. David Simon's really hurt. He's a journalistic hero of mine. Like, he's still brilliant. To stay is unethical. Fuck Elon Musk, that techno brat can choke on his new toy. And when asked, are you going to stay around? Not for $8 or $0.08. Cents. No more free content for a platform that, while already vulnerable, is being tailored for organized disinformation and anti-Semitic racist provocation. To stay as unethical. Fuck Elon Musk, the techno brat can choke on his new toy. Liz Fair, the singer-songwriter, deactivated her account, comparing it to the sinking of the Titanic. And the band played on for not much longer. I'm feeling the deck quaking. So I will add my thanks to each and every one of you for the laughs, the learning, the love, the connection, and the inspiration. A wonderful experience overall. Timing to be decided. And last on the list, uh, David Dastmolchian. A film and stage actor who played Thomas Schiff in The Dark Knight deactivated their Twitter account. And so obviously, Twitter is really feeling it. They've lost all the greats. In fact, uh, one that didn't even make the list. Um, Deanna Troy. Deanna Troy bailed. 
I'm sorry, but I cannot be part of anything owned by Elon Musk and his cabal of deplorables. I'll stay on for a couple of days so that we can say goodbye. But after that, I'm gone. She's gone. She has, she has deactivated her account. That's just such a betazoid move, isn't it? That's that's a fucking, that's a straight fire joke. Uh, but bizarrely, please clap. Uh, <laughs> bizarrely, uh, that list of all the celebrities that we've seen, it was reported everywhere. This is uh, Wall Street Journal decided it was a big deal. They literally listed the same list. And multiple publications did this. It was just the same list. There was the Rolling Stone did the did the same thing. As, as if in, this is in any way like important or is going to affect the health of the company. Like, I mean, exact same list, all the same people, right? Like, there it is. All the celebrities have quit Twitter, like as if, and, and, you know, there was a strong uptake as well for people having this sentiment. And I'll just talk about it while I keep bringing up examples of this exact same list being reported on Mass Los Angeles Times. They were all saying, we're creating the content. You should be paying us to be on Twitter. We create free content for you, Elon. No, you use Twitter as a promotional tool. You know, um, what content do you produce? A tweet is not content. I remember I've had this argument with people. Again, I won't get into too much where it was and with whom but a tweet is not content right but i've had people in esports argue that if you run a straight fire twitter account that's content creation wrong anyway there you go cbs as well i'm out more celebrities vow uh, to leave and so on and on and on and on it went there were a bunch of as well like just fucking lefty let's do some lefty losers other people who've left of no this thing is happening you know you, you'll remember peter dow peter dow of course democratic operative from things like enemy of the people every lefty account i talk to is losing followers in droves i'm down seven thousand since musk took over and this is because of walker bragman another journalist saying i can't tell the bots are getting purged or people are just leaving twitter right let's be absolutely clear with what's happening here i noticed the last couple of days my my twitter account f my, uh, followers did go down as well uh, i lost about 200 250 this is absolutely a bot purge the bots are very much at the forefront of elon musk's thinking because let's be real the bots ruin twitter the bots absolutely ruin Twitter. You can't talk about certain topics without a bot finding you. You talk about global finance, you get like one of them Nigerian prince emails replying to you. You talk about crypto, you get some bot trying to fucking hack your details for free Ethereum. If you talk about K-pop, they fuck the bots find you and say you should have stand Luna. You can't avoid the bots on Twitter and it's bad. The bots ruin polls the bots ruin opinions the bots make trending causes that aren't actually causes anyone cares about at all it breaks what twitter is there to do and elon musk understands that he's spoken openly about it he tried to renege on the deal if you remember because there was too many bots and the number of bots weren't being accurately disclosed that was what he said and basically he got shamed into buying the company which is hilarious but bots absolutely fucking ruined in everything and so that's what's happened i know we all have bot followers or bot accounts or accounts that are suddenly inactive and these are clearly being called and that means yes these accounts like the likes of fucking peter dow clintonite peter dow obviously yeah you've got a ton of bot followers do you know why because in politics there was actual packs that were being paid to make bot followers to inflate follow accounts of certain fucking accounts so it looked like your view was more authoritative and widely followed than it was and again both republicans and democrats doing this and obviously they all said the same thing russians and other such nonsense this is one of the most pathetic examples i've seen imagine running a parody account where you pretend to be god right by the way followed by 6.2 million people 6.2 million terminally online unfunny losers the type of people that retweet drill tweets or whatever the fuck wint or whatever the fuck he's called uh, tell me to sh scream shit the fuck up at me more it only makes my opinions worse no no i'm not owned as i shrink to a congo people just devoid of any imagination never said anything fucking funny in their fucking lives and they follow this fucking trash account oh, he's pretending to be god it's god like fuck me 
if you think this is funny, you need a fucking humor transplant. But anyway, well, I'm out. This is my final tweet. From now on, you can find me at Universodon at the tweet of God. It's been a great ride. Fuck you, Elon Musk. You anti-union, megalomaniacal piece of shit. Please retweet this and join me. Bye. Yeah, like, if you follow this account, you're a loser. <laughs> Just 100%. Like, but the idea that you are a parody account of someone that doesn't exist and you think you're important, you're going to move the dial. You pretend to be God on a website. Like, I, I don't know, like... I, I can't even imagine why you would think this is going to do anything. It's, it's just pathetic. And so, you know, look, there's all of these gimmick accounts, by the way. Like, I, I'll just say this. Gimmick accounts will always let you down. What's a gimmick account, Richard? Well, a gimmick account will be like something like, you know, oh, I love cats. And it's called, like, pictures of cats, right? And you follow pictures of cats because you like cats and you like to see pictures of cats. Because you're just, again, a fucking ATIQ internet denizen who just likes cats. And that's fine. You're not harming anyone. You could be an ATIQ internet denizen for me. It's fine. Just look at your pictures of cats. And it's fine that there's an account that caters to you. No problem with it whatsoever. Just stay in your little cat bubble looking at cats all day. And, you know, don't do anything else too strenuous or important for the rest of us look at your cats and shut the fuck up but the problem is that account will one day say just taking a break from posting the cats today to post a picture of a sad cat to protest roe v wade these gimmick accounts will always let you fucking down they start out with a gimmick the gimmick gets popular they acquire a following and now suddenly these fucking anonymous nobodies want to talk about their opinions like they ever fucking mattered in the first place they don't matter you don't matter i don't know who you are you tweet out pictures of cats stick to that people don't follow you for your insightful political opinions you want to do that step out from behind the shadows and tell me something fucking original which you're incapable of because again i stress you tweet pictures of cats all these gimmick accounts will fucking let you down on a long enough time scale don't bother with them because the first i i, I followed a few Bukowski quotes, Hunter S. Thompson quotes, and it's just like, okay, right, this quote's about Trump. Hunter S. Thompson never said anything about Trump. Oh, it's you! <laughs> You're now posing as Hunter S. Thompson, like, this is garbage, like, fuck you. That Four Horsemen account, did it remember? That was a cringe nickname anyway, but it was like, are we, we quote, are we tweet out content from Christopher Hitchens and Richard Dawkins, then suddenly all it was talking about was, Trump is an evil, so Trump is an evil, we must stop Trump. Like, who are you? Like, I don't give a fuck, you think I'm following you for you? And not the four fucking, you know, better minds, actual great people that you're leeching off? One of them being fucking dead, you tasteless cunt. No, gimmick accounts are trash. I do follow... Jace is right to pull me on this. I do follow that YouTube thumbnails account. That is straight fire. And I do follow Jav titles. Jav being Japanese adult videos. And the titles of them, which are always just ridiculous things. Like, I smelt smegma. <laughs> Come and watch. And you're just like, what, what is happening in Japan? I don't know. But anyway, like, you know, so I, I follow those, okay? I follow those. Right, what now? <laughs> right, sue me. I gotta get something out of Twitter. Pac-Man, as I call him, literally terrified. Oh, the prospect of people leaving Twitter. You can see here. Don't leave Twitter, you guys. If you leave, the twice impeached boneheaded insurrection inciter and his smooth brain followers win. That's crazy talk. This is Brooklyn Dad Defiant with 1.1 million followers. Why do I call him Pac-Man? Pac, obviously, you know, you know what it stands for. So this is a guy who gets paid by the Democrats to tweet out anything the Democrats want. That's it. That's his life. This is a guy who claims to be from Brooklyn who says January the 6th was worse than fucking September the 11th. No joke. Like, fuck you. You should have your Brooklyn card revoked for even uttering that nonsense. And he does all of this to sell dog shit books and dog shit merchandise. All this vote blue, no matter, ma no matter who bullshit, with absolutely no political backbone or beliefs of his own. So he doesn't want you to leave Twitter because that means his money dries up. And that's all it's about. Pac-Man. He also tweeted his, again about Trump trying to find a silver lining. Laughing my fucking ass off. It just occurred to me that if the mango Mussolini starts tweeting again, he'll end up killing Truth Social. Excellent. 
Why would that be excellent? Why would that be better? I thought it was a threat to norms and a threat to democracy if Trump was on Twitter. I thought it was literally the worst thing of all time. I thought it was going to actually kill people if Trump was allowed back on Twitter. But now you're saying it's actually good because you're terrified of losing the Twitter followers, which give you the influence and by extension access to the PAC money that you take and don't disclose every single fucking tweet on Twitter because apparently that's perfectly acceptable. Whereas if you're sponsored by somebody, a business, you have to disclose it and put hashtag ad and all that stuff in there. But it's okay if it's a political activist committee that's totally fine um by the way something that would clean up uh twitter immensely everybody who takes money for a pack for the, from from a pack for their opinions has a big fucking sign on it like you do for state media that would help twitter get better right immediately i know you're a fucking shill and shouldn't listen to anything you say this one was also uh cringe this is the communication director for microsoft just another shameless twitter addict that can't employ their principles because they're addicted to the platform i only reinstalled twitter to see if it was true <laughs> sure buddy sadly it is i can't think of what else one could do to destroy that advertiser funded platform than this that said as donald knows the margin nutcases will pay for anything so maybe there's an option for elon even if i block trump again his ripples of hatred are unavoidable this is the final straw. Oh, what are you going to fucking do about it? Cry about it. By the way, enjoy having the Democrat government all the way up your company's ass when, when they start looking at antitrust fucking laws for your takeover of fucking Activision Blizzard. You think you're going to have any favours over on that side of the fucking aisle, you idiot? Of course, hit pieces were coming out. All my hit pieces. Ah, oh, this is interesting. A Washington Post one that's looking garbage. But anyway, you get the headline. Musk issues ultimatum to staff. Commit to the hardcore Twitter or take the severance. Of course, that again, just a standard option. Like stop drinking red wine on the roof, maybe and uh, and uh, do some work. I don't know. Uh, there was this as well. Forbes went with trying to say Elon Musk was making child abuse on Twitter worse. Perhaps one of the more bald hit pieces. And again, they used use this term the most loaded term probably in all of media experts right uh, in case you're not up to speed with what's been going on twitter actually found itself embroiled in a number of lawsuits and uh, and investigations around pedophiles operating on the space using like secret hashtag codes and sharing you know sick images of children and fuck knows what else and twitter had in some instances been alerted to the existence of this and despite having 8,000 employees back in the pre elon musk era algorithmically it was determined because remember twitter allows porn it's one of the reasons why you've got to be mad careful showing twitter on a stream you just never know when porn's gonna pop up the algorithm determined it to be okay and so those children that were abused had their images of that abuse circulated on that platform and twitter did nothing about it so this is one of the problems that elon is going to inherit it is something they are going to have to have to fix and of course elon who we all know talks about children how much he loves children he's got fucking hundreds of children you know he's took that very seriously not according to forbes forbes want to frame him as making the problem worse and see it talks about the civil suit i just alluded to how the abuse image imagery spread back in 2017 and blah 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 um experts the experts are of course media friendly mouthpieces an actual credible expert in the field would be someone like eliza blue eliza blue is a victim of human trafficking um who is now an advocate for multiple human trafficking charities she herself has actively pushed back against twitter while being on twitter and has talked a lot about this she's a very high profile uh person in the space about these particular topics and uh, you can see she wrote uh, an opinion piece at newsweek talking about all the ways within which elon has actually helped and in which elon has certainly brought in safeguards that make it less likely this type of sick shit can proliferate on their platform uh, in the future but of course no that's not good enough uh, elon's the bad man definitely not the previous people hilariously cbs by the way yeah I, 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 there's a chance i get her on the podcast before the end of the year so that'll be a great episode i'm really looking forward to that i just sort of need to think about how uh because it's a you know i I'm, i need to sort of make sure i'm not a fucking 
bull in a china shop asshole about that but anyway here you go cbs news and uh have now said they're going to pause activity on twitter in light of the uncertainty around twitter and out of an abundance of caution cbs news is pausing its activity on the social media site as it continues to monitor the platform major johnson vigliotti thank you so CBS News said we're not going to be on Twitter anymore. Uh, Boo-hoo again, right? But uh, why? Uh, they said out of an abundance of caution and uncertainty around the platform. Again, these are just buzzwords that mean nothing. There is no security issue. There is no uncertainty. There is no indication the platform is going to suddenly fail or go off offline. Uh, and also, there's no inkling of what the negative would be for CBS to just keep posting on Twitter regardless of those things. There were... what. P what possible bad could come from it but no this was cbs acting as they do in the little corporate way falling in a lockstep with all the other fucking apparatus around remember joe biden has said we might need to investigate elon musk as a threat to national security for buying twitter that's the same company that as you know from the previous video was literally working to violate people's civil rights by taking down their free speech if the government didn't like it uh, so uh, they were the propaganda arm for the DNC. So uh, they decided that, yes, we're going to stop posting on Twitter because we're not okay with this. No other news outlets came along for the ride. And hilariously, CBS had to come slinking back to say after pausing for much of the weekend to ass assess the security concerns, CBS News and Stations is resuming its activity on Twitter as we continue to monitor the situation. Definitely nothing to do with Twitter being one of your largest platforms when it comes to engagement and blah 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 what a fucking joke imagine being the person who has to press send on that tweet anyway we've arrived at the moment the moment you've all been waiting for it's time to talk about the orange man trump let's get that in there so trump i want to remind you all what trump was suspended for i've said this many times i like i can sort of talk with people about almost any political opinion. I'm very good at engaging with people who I disagree with personally and not letting affect my judgment of them as people. You know, I, it's why I always laugh when people say, oh, you block people on Twitter, you want an echo chamber. It's like, no, I block you if you're a moron, you've got nothing to say. I mean, Duncan fundamentally disagree on a bunch of stuff. I mean, Samler fundamentally disagree on a bunch of stuff. You know, loads of my friends in real life, we fundamentally disagree on a bunch of stuff. For fuck's sake, my best friend in the world is some fucking lefty vegan. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm okay with it. Right? Like, I, it, 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 you know, it's not going to make me love you any less if you don't, like, you know, our brains don't perfectly fucking tessellate. But one thing I absolutely will, I just know you've got nothing to say, uh, nothing worth me listening to, is if you come in and you believe January the 6th was a, con was a controlled and contrived effort, like, to overthrow an election, if you call it a coup d'etat, right? If you call it a coup d'etat, I can't, because it wasn't. And I've seen coups, and I know coups, and America's funded coups all over the world. And let me tell you, rule number one of a coup, definitely turn up with guns. Because <laughs> you're overthrowing a government, and they got them. So, and the idea that the American government is going to say, no, 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 like on the one hand, they go, you don't need your Second Amendment rights because we could just nuke you. That's what Joe Biden literally said. And everyone was like, uh, okay, that's good today for some reason. Um, they also simultaneously want you to believe that a bunch of morons, like <laughs> just these fucking hoople heads that just wandered in off the fucking streets were literally let into the building in some instances were were somehow all planning and you know colluding with each other and rogue factions within the government to take over control of america and that it was a viable risk and it would have happened so much so they didn't even choose to deploy extra police on the day that it occurred no guys i'm sorry you can call it you can call i you know i don't even like insurrection it was a it was a riot acts of domestic terrorism certainly occurred they went into government buildings they shouldn't have gone in any any consequences that come from that those are the consequences but at the end of the day a coup d'etat no sorry that's crazy talk and that that's my cutoff point for the lefty crazy that's where i go
And see ya, see ya, see ya. Nothing more to say. Like, so anyway, the permanent suspension of real Donald, of the real Donald Trump, uh, was these following tweets. And he said here, you know, the 75 million great Americans who voted for me, America first, to make America great again, will have a giant voice in the future. Uh, they will not be disrespected or treated unfairly in any way, shape, or form. Then he tweeted to all those who have asked, I will not be going to the inauguration on January the 20th. These two tweets are why Donald Trump got suspended. This is what was deemed to, by Twitter, to be stochastic terrorism. And people don't remember because they banned the account. And so people never saw the tweets. And you can see here, they, they explain why those tweets are bad, okay? So due to the ongoing tensions in the United States and an uptick in the global conversation in regards to people who violently stormed the Capitol on Jan 6, these two tweets must be read in the context of broader events in the country and the ways in which the president's statements can be mobilized by different audiences, including to incite violence, as well as in the context of the pattern of behavior from this account in recent weeks those tweets again the 75 million great american patriots who voted for me america first to make america great again will have a giant voice long into the future they will not be disrespected or treated unfairly in any way shape or form the second tweet to all of those who have asked i will not be going to the inauguration on january 20th those are the two tweets that's the stochastic terrorism donald trump was responsible for right here they explain why those tweets are stochastic terrorism president trump's statement he will not be attending the inauguration is being received by a number of his supporters as further confirmation the election was not legitimate i don't know go go gadget arms because that's a fucking reach the second tweet may also serve encouragement to those potentially considering violent acts and that the inauguration would be a safe target as he will not be there you've just made that up twitter that's in your mind. <laughs> like, you, <laughs> there's nothing even implied there. The use of the words American patriots to describe some of his supporters is also being interpreted as support for those committing violent acts. So remember that, because I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure I could find a supercut of Joe Biden calling people American patriots or true patriots. The mention of his supporters having a giant voice long into the future and that they will not be disrespected is being interpreted as further indication President Trump does not plan to facilitate an orderly transition and instead that he plans to continue to support, empower and shield those who believe he won the election. Now remember as well, the Trump administration said there would of course be an orderly transference of power. They never said there wouldn't be. So again, Twitter just made that uh made that completely whole cloth up and then the last point plans for future armed protests have already begun proliferating on and off twitter including a proposed secondary attack on the u.s capitol and state capitol buildings on january 17 2021 don't know maybe tell the feds <laughs> to stop <laughs> that's a joke everybody it's okay there's no cues on my t-shirt right but you know like again so deal with that tell the police share with them the intelligence that you've harvested with your social media platform that is it that was why donald trump was suspended those two tweets and i want to remind you because this got lost in the fucking noise after he got cancelled his like his last two tweets from january 6th not his last overall this is wrong I'm asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful, no violence. Remember, we are the party of law and order. Respect the law and our great men and women in blue. Thank you. Please support our Capitol Police and law enforcement. They are truly on the side of our country. Stay peaceful. Two calls for peace on the day of January the 6th. The claims that he was, like, I'm not saying his rhetoric wasn't divisive. I'm not saying he didn't get people riled up. I'm not saying the cult of Trump isn't a bad thing politically. I, of course, all of those things are true. But at the end of the day, what, tw what Twitter's excuse for what they did is outrageous and doesn't hold up to any scrutiny whatsoever and it should be perfectly acceptable to say that anyway elon musk decided to do it he did a poll and he said should we reinstate donald trump and they had a vote and it went 70 percent in favor at about three million four million and then over the course of the day, as more as more Democrat operatives, who certainly would never use bots for anything, uh, got a handle on it. It went, Wee! and also, look, I'm sure millions of people don't want Trump back on Twitter. I get that, right? Like, I, it would probably do him a favor if he'd never been on it in the first place. But anyway, Wee! and it got to 51.7, like, in favor of Trump. And he said, Vox Populi, Vox Day. There you go. The will of the people. And so Trump was officially unbanned on twitter the worst thing that could happen in human history just happened and you can see that after it happened everybody was waiting oh my god the orange man's gonna tweet trump 
just isn't going to tweet. <laughs> he just hasn't yet. It's probably, I don't know if it is going to happen, actually. He said that he, um, uh, you see, 15 million Twitter users voted uh, in the poll with 51.8% voting in favor of reinstatement. And uh, Trump uh, said on uh, a, a news appearance he was doing, because obviously he's announced he's going to run again, which is going to be disastrous for him. He's going to get absolutely creamed and probably not win the nomination. Uh, so, in my opinion, certainly won't win the nomination. Uh, I don't see any reason for it to come back to Twitter, the former president said via video when asked if he planned to return. He said that Truth Social was doing phenomenally well, and that would be his, uh, his preferred platform. Obviously, Truth Social is not doing <laughs> phenomenally well. That's what we call a lie. That is actually actually what we call a barefaced lie it's not doing well by any conceivable metric its traffic is a fraction the size of uh, twitter uh, it's lost a ton of money and what i suspect uh, actually is happening here is there were some people speculating about when he got the investors to invest in truth social one of the agreements was that whatever happened with any of his accounts anywhere else and remember trump's not just banned by twitter he's banned by twitch he's banned by pinterest <laughs> It's fucking so stupid. Pinterest, where people go to stir up coup d'etats. You know, he's banned by all these tech companies, right? One of the agreements people speculate, and I have no insight into this one way or the other, it's not my circle, but uh, they speculate that he made an agreement with the investors that to ensure the maximum traffic and the maximum return, he would only, t you know, communicate via Truth Social. So that's been speculated that he would need to get out of that agreement to even go back to twitter and if he did go back to twitter regardless of, of that agreement being in place or not they could get could find himself victim to a lawsuit because he would essentially by using twitter would be working against truth social and he could get sued so this is the type of thing that's bubbling away but so far no tweet although you can look at some of his older tweets now which man alive it is like the fucking treasure trove it is like it's like being indiana jones and you just and you've just found some legendary shit posts i mean it's absolutely ridiculous one thing i will say is the guy was a fucking honest to god hilarious lunatic the things he said are so stupefyingly dumb but obviously as well said in a really funny fucking way like you can't help but be amusing you know and i don't care what anyone says it's good to have those uh, it's good to have them back anyway needless to say this caused a bit of a meltdown sports ski dar collected uh, collected these uh, I'm deleting the app. Netizens have a meltdown. And you can see here, uh, Donald Trump is back on Twitter. I'm deleting the app. If Elon Musk reinstates Trump, I will be leaving this country. <laughs> I got my passport last week when I heard he might buy Twitter. Instead, I'll be moving to a civilized country, the gorgeous Tanzania. So long, America. You lost a citizen. Goodbye. Uh, Tanzania is, is gorgeous uh, at the moment. By the way, uh, if it's true Trump is back here, I'm leaving. I'll miss good folks. I follow some political folks and updates from Ukrainians, but I can't stomach Trump. Due to this unfortunate decision, we will be closing our Twitter account this month. That was the real state informer there. Uh, no, this is the worst day in all my life. Stop this app. It's fallen to fascism. Do not do this. I am freaking out right now. Um, that seals the deal, said Alex Schroeder. I am no longer a Twitter fan. I've been a fan since 2014 and a Twitter Blue subscriber since last week. Wow, a whole week. I officially will not be renewing my plan. So, you know, $8 and then I'm out with <laughs> big financial spend. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> next cycle no will i use the app luke zaleski remember him from the other video the guy who literally spams on it the reply guy uh what's amazing is you're not even embarrassed trump got kicked off social media do you know how messed up you have to be to get kicked off social media as the president you basically have to attempt to overthrow the government which he did of course just embarrassing uh my 13 year old son used to admire you elon musk used to other people said that it must could rig the votes you can see uh there ever heard of january the 6th not saying i'm against this decision but what happened to no major account reinstatements before the council convenes and he said uh, that was the thing that he said he would do um so you know lots of uh, back and forth uh, on that one uh and of course civil rights leaders said no 
He broke promises to us. Now, I want to make it absolutely clear. Elon Musk owns it in its totality. He is the entirety of Twitter for now. He is, he's not beholden to shareholders or anything like that. This was the free press did not call. In reinstating Trump, Musk breaks his promises he made to civil rights leaders and other advertisers. Uh, earlier this month, as you know, uh, you can see the free press CEO, uh, co-CEO rather, Jessica J. Gonzalez, met with Musk alongside the leaders of the ADL, the Asian American Foundation, color of change in the NAACP during the meeting Musk pledged to not allow anyone who was de who was deplatformed for violating Twitter's rules back on the platform until Twitter had a clear process for doing so combat hate and harassment and enforce Twitter's election integrity policies and create a new content moderation council including the civil rights community and groups who face hate-fueled violence in response to him unbanning Twitter, Gonzalez said, in less than three weeks, Musk has gone back on every promise he made to civil rights leaders and advertisers. Let's just assess that. He, uh, the promise was not to allow anyone who was deplatformed for violating Twitter's rules back on the platform until Twitter had a clear process. The clear process in Trump was people's vote. So, hasn't really broken a promise there for me. Combat hate and harassment and enforce Twitter's in le election integrity policies. I have no idea whether or not he's done that, nor do you. Uh, but as for combating hate and harassment on the platform, I would say conducting an investigation into all of those accounts, spamming the N-word and harassing people, and subsequently banning them, upholds number two, upholds that promise. And three, create a new content moderation council, including the civil rights community and groups who face hate fuel violence. That's ongoing and certainly seems to be going ahead, irrespective of what you think about Trump. But anyway, he laid off the majority of Twitter's workforce in in, char in, cha in charge of enforcing anti-hate and harassment. Yes, the freeloaders, we call them. The people that were doing absolutely fuck all at the company, except swanning around drinking red wine and playing cornhole on the fucking roof in the glorious sunshine. And election integrity policies. He dra By the way, election integrity policies, as far as I can see, is if a Republican says Democrats bad, you ban them. If a Democrat says, uh, here's some lies that we've done, like they did today, tweeting out a bunch of bullshit to talk about over thanksgiving saying hey why not bring this up over thanksgiving and let everybody know biden's actually doing a good job you know that's perfectly acceptable and not only acceptable twitter has an obligation to amplify it apparently but anyway he drastically chained a major policy banning hate speech to a vague rule where hateful tweets can remain on the site but supposedly won't be amplified or monetized indeed what elon musk had said is you will have freedom of speech but not freedom of reach and this has again got everyone in a Ooh, they've all caught the vapors because basically that's like how most websites work but now that elon said he's gonna do it uh, it's a bad thing uh, what he means by that freedom of speech not freedom of reach freedom of speech means you can say what you want freedom of reach means if it's bad hate speech or any of the other you know prohibited types of speech on most social media platforms it will just be de-indexed and near impossible to find to limit the number of people who can see it just to your direct followers Musk's reinstatement of Trump's account involved no clear process, it had a, a very public and transparent vote, but relied on the results of a flimsy Twitter poll, which apparently is bad now. I'm sure if, I'm sure if the poll had gone the other way, it would, and he didn't unban Trump, you, no one would complain. Asking Musk's follower to decide the former president's fate. Musk took this careless decision without convening the new council. He promised to protect Twitter users from hate and disinformation and keep advertisers from exiting the platform. As far as I can tell, this new council doesn't exist. It's just one of the many bad faith promises Musk has made civil rights leaders and then tossed aside. And again, I just hate to say it like, while I think civil rights work is obviously a very noble goal and all that, Musk doesn't owe you a fucking thing. He doesn't have to do anything you say. Like legally, ethically, morally, there's not it's his company now. He runs it the way he wants. That if you don't like that being the case, you really need to look at the free market economy within which you operate and maybe make some changes to it. Or, you know, like we've been told for fucking six years, seven years, build your own Twitter. The ADL went specifically a bit harder in the paint. Uh, you can see here, uh, in response to the poll, uh, for Elon Musk to allow Donald Trump back on Twitter ostensibly after a brief poll shows he's not remotely serious about safeguarding the platform from hate, harassment, and misinformation. Keep in mind, this is in protest of somebody who hasn't even tweeted yet, and probably will not. As we've said before, Trump used Twitter to, f to foment intolerance, issue threats, and incite a violent attack against the US government. Uh, there's no proof of any of that, but that is the narrative, I guess, so we go along with it. Moreover, he has shown no indication he would do anything different if given the opportunity when adl and other stop hate for profit leaders met with elon musk 
on the 1st of November, he committed to not re-platform anyone regardless of stature until he installed a transparent clear process that took into consideration the views of civil society. Elon Musk's decision over the last month have been erratic and alarming, but this decision is dangerous and a threat to American democracy. We need to ask, is it time for Twitter to go? So that's interesting, isn't it? Time for Twitter to go. Go where, dickhead? Go where? What are you talking about? It's his private company. You go. You leave. You don't use it. That's how it works. But this is what I mean about it being like this fucking shakedown operation. They will lean on advertisers and shame them and making out that they're like supporting apartheid South Africa or Nazi Germany if they continue to advertise on Twitter. That's the ADL's way they get they get paid uh, if anyone sticks around and supports it. But it's like, what do you mean? Time to go. And then, of course, as I said, when you hear Joe Biden saying things like, yeah, we're going to look at it, see if Elon Musk is a threat to national security just because he owns Twitter now and it's never been a problem before and you were happy subsidize him on tesla and fucking spacex in fact you were championing tesla not that long ago and fucking giving out all those subsidies um it seems patently absurd to me but whatever that's where we're at then of course aoc chimed up again and just said some like took took the next <laughs> illogical leap uh, obviously she's been beefing with Elon since it happened. I wish she'd just hurry up and get to the point where she becomes an influencer or a uh, TV host at a news company or a news anchor. That's inevitably where she ends up. She clearly doesn't like the political system with, in which she's a part of. She was getting absolutely blasted by some of her followers for voting in line with the Biden administration, which again, you've got to play the game. That's how it works. Uh, you know, over things like Ukraine and, and funding there and encouraging, you know, what they say some of her followers is you know upholding american hegemony but anyway she said i don't know man last time he was on this platform uh it, he, he used it to incite an insurrection multiple people died the vice president of the united states was nearly assassinated and hundreds were injured but i guess that's not enough for you to answer this question so look uh, of course Pretty much all of that isn't true, uh, with the exception of maybe hundreds being injured. And remember, she's got previous, because during the insurrection, she lied and pretended to be in the building where it took place when she wasn't, uh, you know politicians that they'll disappoint you every time the mayor of london sadiq khan he's got a view no i don't know london while he's been in charge has devolved into a city nobody wants to live in anymore but he, here he had to say uh, the return of donald trump to twitter shows why we desperately need new regulation of social media and online speech of course a british politician would think that was the answer more censorship you got a license for them thoughts for me freedom of speech is vital but it must be balanced against keeping other people to protect our democracy and uh, to protect our democracy and society. Trump's actions have put people at risk from hate crimes and physical violence, and he encouraged an attempt to overthrow the democratically elected U.S. government on 6th of January. We already know it could happen again if he is allowed back. He should not be given access to a huge platform to continue spreading hate and undermining democracy without at the very least signing a binding code of conduct leading to his immediate removal if broken. Everyone signs that's called a TOS dickhead. Trump is a dangerous far right politician who has a history of inciting violence. He must not be allowed to use social media to preach hate and further fuel the politics of division. By the way, Sadiq Khan is the individual who said ter terrorist attacks in a big city are just something, that's just the price you pay for living in a city. Literally said that said that so you know i don't know uh, for me is that not spreading hate and endangering people by essentially excusing that you know also you are a british politician maybe focus on british things maybe focus on other many many issues in london the rising crime rates and things like this i don't know maybe trump shouldn't be uh on your uh fucking radar uh, and yes, uh, just for those that haven't heard that quote, let me just bring it up for you, and I'll bring it up from a lefty source, so, so you know I'm, I'm not, like, falling into, ooh, it's a right-wing demagogue. City Khan, London Mayor says, being prepared for terror attacks, just part and parcel of living in a major city. Uh, we've got to be prepared for these terrorist attacks. It's the price you pay. So there he is. Uh, part and parcel, guys. Part and parcel, uh, said the Mayor of London. Then, this was funny. That was, by the way, yeah, that was after the Manchester bombings, um, which are going to come up in a moment. Julia Loffy. There it is. He paid $44 billion and destroyed Twitter to reinstate Trump. And there, of course, is Elon Musk as the uh, Statue of Liberty holding up the tweets with no, the, no lady screaming around it. But, like, that's, he's destroyed Twitter, apparently. Like, working perfectly fine. Still using it. No problems. Actually, better than it was before, but there you go. 
David Levitt, an absolute scumbag of the highest order. He, by the way, like seriously, this is how you know that the idea that Elon Musk is going to be some sort of like evil overlord and ban people criticizing him. People like this, if you're a journalist, this is just genuinely what I think. If you're a journalist and you deliberately spread misinformation to suit your political viewpoints, I don't think you should have a platform. I expect politicians to lies, lie. Journalists are ethically bound not to, right? So it's worse. But this is David, David Levitt. How many Americans will die because Elon Musk brought real Donald Trump back to Twitter? I'll answer that for you, David, you thick cunt. None, exactly zero uh, is the answer. He's back. Every American who dies because of this will be Elon Musk's fault. And then, just showing how little it actually matters. He's back and Trump went from 300k to 1 million followers in 15 minute minutes. Yeah, he did. Do you know why? Because when an account is suspended by Twitter, it takes off all of their followers and then slowly reintroduces them again. Something you should know as a tech journalist. Now, just to let you know, like when you, Levitt is definitely concerned uh, with people's lives because this is the individual that after the Manchester bombing at an Ariana Grande concert, he is the guy uh, that actually fucking decided to mock dead children famously. Right, this was his tweet. Multiple confirmed fatalities at the Manchester Arena. The last time I listened to Ariana Grande, I almost died too. That's not fake. That's not uh, That's not an impersonator. That's not photoshopped. That is a 100% genuine tweet he did while they picked dead children out of rubble. Every time you see that cunt pipe up about the sanctity of life, shut that fucker down. He is one of the biggest pieces of shit in the journalist set. We also had this from a corporate accountability ability specialist that means a snitch a professional snitch and busybody uh this is Sh uh, shannon coulter who said i've just emailed the head of safety at apple and google respectively to ask if their app stores will continue to carry the twitter app now that elon musk has reinstated donald trump yes this is going to be these things like what are they called um uh fucking rising giants or whatever the fuck they're called you're going to see all these activist groups now try and pressure all the other tech companies that they get to back channel because all their fucking lefty mates work in them and they're going to be trying to make the twitter app disappear that will be the next thing that has to happen if they want to actually hurt elon musk which is you know what this is all about essentially so you can see just email the head of safety you know i love living in the heads of marga weirdos rent free thanks for the early christmas present hope you all recover from the ordeal of me having sent an email i mean no I mean, you don't need to be a trump supporter to say what you're doing is absolutely pathetic like it's a joke especially when you consider the president of mexico now, you may remember, Trump said some things about Mexicans. I wanted to build a wall, didn't he? And what was it, right? But this is the president of Mexico saying, uh, I already voted for Trump, and he tweeted it out, obviously, to all of his followers, Mexicans, saying, I already voted for Trump to be able to use Twitter. The Statue of Liberty must not remain an empty symbol. Even he don't give a fuck. <laughs> Even he's not as ass paint as you fucking journalist type. And he was gonna, he was meant to pay for the wall. Just to un uh, underline as well, this was another one of the Mastodon refugees that can't say refugees. Karen Atia on Mastodon, definitely on Mastodon, uh, but still tweeting. Uh, Elon Musk is jailbreaking another one of his white supremacist buddies because everything's so fucking stupid. You can't just label yay <laughs> an anti Semite where you'll have a point. <laughs> you have to call him a white supremacist. And I just, I just don't know. What do people think the end is? The, 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 the diminishing returns of the black white supremacist. Like, fuck me. Anyway, there it is. That's where we're up to. That's like pretty much as of today. You now know just how stupid Twitter's got. Now the journalist class are losing their minds. And what will probably follow next uh, is going to be some sort of investigation by the American federal government. Uh, because, you know, Elon Musk has been bad for reasons. There you have it. The box is America, man. It's a fucking, it's a, it's a clown show. It's an absolute joke.